Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. It is a noon hour on Thursday, folks. Ted Ralston here in our Think Tech studios, downtown Honolulu, uh, momentarily transposed to uh, looks like Kahana Bay or somewhere. Anyway, our show, Where the Drone Leads, where we bring to our public, uh, the inquiring public, uh, all the new, and inf new information you need to think about drones uh, from operations, regulations, and, and sometimes technology. And today we're going to talk about the math of drones. Math of drones, what's that all about? Uh, joining us from uh, far away uh, Syracuse, New York, in the snow belt and the humidity belt, we have uh, Dr. Sasi Prabhakahan. Uh, of uh, CEO, President, and Chief of uh, AK Robotics. Uh, Sasi, welcome on board from a far away location here. Hello. Oh, thanks, Ted. Thanks for the introduction. Yeah, thank you. Okay, and <laughs> then. Acrobotics, yeah, I can call that. We'll call it Acrobotics, okay. Acrobotics, uh, yeah. All right. We'll repronounce <laughs> your company name and we'll keep pronouncing your own name uh, as Saucy to make uh -huh. it the easy part. But you got an intriguing outline of things behind you there that we can see. We can see somebody moving around. So uh, before we talk oh, yeah. about math, let's talk about what you got behind you there. So this is uh, my R&D office uh, based in like a, in a city of Syracuse and it's in the upstate. So here we have our R&D lab and you can see a net cage. So whenever we come up with some cola, a new estimation scheme or some kind of related to the drone yeah, to be safe, yeah, we just uh, do everything on the other side and consider to be safe. Yeah, like that is the validation testing part. Because that's what the FAA is also looking at. Like, they need a safe and reliable drone. Yeah, and we are on that one. So, first, we wanted to make ourselves safe and comfortable operating the drone. And once we come up and do everything good, yeah, then we will launch it in outdoor field uh, to get all these certification, FAA approval, not affecting and harming people. So, here uh, we have all our, like, uh, bench top testing computers and the drone components. Actually, we build both the hardware and software uh, for the uh, flight stack. So we are specialized in uh, autonomous navigation, guidance, and control. So we'll talk more about that one, why autonomy is more important, and uh, what is the safe autonomy. Yeah, and that is what we all care about. And uh, so these are some of the platforms that we build to validate our uh, findings. So we do the guidance, navigation, control. So we put all these things, our source code, embed that in this platform, do an indoor testing. We have optical uh, motion tracking system, validate it against that one. Then once everything is good, take it out and do a real-time uh, con ops and kind of case study. So this is what it's all about. That, that's pretty cool. So right in your own office, right where you work and do your daily yeah. work, you've got the test range as well. Again, in, indoor test range leading to outdoor testing. And we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute, but what we're talking about Acrobotics, let's talk about how that company came into being and where you think it's all headed, because this whole world of drones is just exploding, as you very well know. Yeah. So this is a, yeah, a good question. So uh, I'm personally like, uh, I was like a, a researcher, still I'm a researcher, but before that, uh, before starting this company, I was like a, a postdoc scientist at Syracuse University, where we are again doing the core research about unmanned systems. And uh, before that, I was a PhD student, and still I was doing all these guidance, uh, control, and navigation problems for uh, a general unmanned systems, like including spacecraft, self-driving cars, and EAVs as well. So as things getting really tightened now, it's picking a big boom for these uh, unmanned systems, autonomous vehicles. The state of New York uh, wanted to stand uh, uh, top in this particular domain, so they wanted to keep um, uh, the upstate New York as the uh, drone capital or the drone central. Like uh, so, all the global companies, all the global like R and D labs can come here, do their testing, and they wanted to build an ecosystem here. So, the government spent a lot of money on that one. There is so many active projects going on here, and uh, one program to the uh, state of New York is uh, a Genius New York program which is like a world largest uh, business incubator competition for um, unmanned systems, specifically for drone-based technologies. So it's an international competition, so uh, all startups and middle companies uh, can participate in this one uh, with their unique uh, inventions and some technology. 
so in the very first edition of this genius in your competition like uh, i applied like uh, just to with, with all my ideas like whatever i was doing as part of my academic research and development i wanted to kind of bridge that gap because the industry is looking for something and as the academy the people the researchers in academia they were doing something so there need to be a bridge between these two things then i found this a uh, good opportunity to take all the uh, the hardcore research and development happening in the universities to the industry because the industry is in much need and looking the there is a big demand for this actual science behind this autonomy the unmanned system and safe flight so i found that as a good opportunity and i have a couple of patents and tons of papers uh, regarding the guidance navigation control of uh, eav system so with all these things i submitted my application and uh, my company got selected uh, kind of out of 250 other competitors and we are incubating here in the Syracuse Tech Garden so this is also a government incubator and accelerator for uh, small startup businesses and uh, so this office is under their hood so uh, we are directly uh, funded by the state to start all these things and it's all going so now we are bridging the gap between the science and the engineering <laughs> That's that's fantastic. And you and I first met uh, about six months ago in San Diego at the NASA FAA IPP kickoff meeting, and appreciate the enthusiasm you had there and the ideas and what you are doing now and showing us the background and and describing more how the company came into being. That's pretty a pretty good testimony to the, the, the to the sincerity that the state of New York is is applying to the drone situation. And I think we all applaud the way the 50 mile corridor test range has been generated in New York and that was yeah, done it's happening right here in yeah. Syracuse <laughs> and, and it was it, but it's done to save the state money that was the part that really struck me it's an investment that's already paying off because they don't need yep. to have the uh, the chase aircraft uh, tra uh, trail behind the National Guard aircraft as their UAVs as they're going from site to site. So the training got better, the cost went down, don't need demand aircraft to support and a hot spare to carry for the one that is doing training or doing the, the uh, following. So cost savings by virtue of investment. That is a really interesting story and to, to know you and what you're doing about it is 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 quite incredible what, what i and, and the fact is you're working on guidance navigation and control that's like the core of the whole aspect of the yeah. uav if you don't have that you don't have a uav you certainly don't have an autonomous one and so what i had wanted to do was have you lead us through a conversation that we could use with teachers and and students in school uh, i'm talking about high school even elementary perhaps in that regard and and of course university and postdocs as well but uh, the whole core of the drone system is is a lot of mathematics, and uh, you know you pick up something like this and you look at it, and you can see right away we got mechanical issues like we got structure, we got materials, we got fabrication, we've got uh, propulsion, we got fuel mechanisms, we've got uh, uh, some form of control, we've got electronics, we've got radio communication, we've got sensors, we've got. Uh, uh, need to be reliable and durable. We've got on the, on the ground station, we've got the need to do a lot of computation and analysis of what's being recorded. We need to do mission planning. There's so much in here that when you look at it, you see some, but what you don't see is what's inside. And what you're dealing with is totally uh, under the cover, under the hood, yeah. uh, what's inside. Yeah. And I would say yeah. that we're at a fairly elementary level of that right now, moving into a much more advanced domain. <laughs> And it's math that's going to lead us there. And and it, it, math, I, I came out of aeronautical engineering. We all deal with triple integrals and things like this on aerodynamic forces. But uh, that isn't what's needed here. We need here the dynamic math, the, uh, the various forms of uh, pattern recognition, uh, uh, <laughs> Uh, covariance and some of the more exotic factors of math that lead to a, a different state of thinking, a different state of calculation. We're not talking about arith arithmetic calculation. We're talking about <laughs> insight generated through computation. So uh, if we wanted to approach high schoolers and tell them what domain of math to think about or even approach our <laughs> folks at the university and generate a math for drones curriculum or uh, sub-curriculum, Tell us what you think we would need to do to start down that direction. Oh, yeah. It's a, a much needed thing now because everybody is like fascinated about drones and applications. 
who can do this, can deliver pizzas, it can <laughs> deliver anything, and it can, so there are so many buzz going around these things. But it's really good to have all these high school and elementary school kids, especially like involved in the science behind this one. So, so I normally define and understand science using mathematics. Yes, I may not know German, I may not know Spanish, I may not know uh, uh, any other foreign language, but I know this particular language called mathematics, and using that language, I can communicate with science, the nature. So there is a natural scientific process that need to be like uh, encoded mathematically, and then that will be translated to programming code, assembly language, and that machine, uh, the drone, the, the mechatronic device, can understand these things. So, so this is the basic foundation. So as a high school and elementary school kids, like uh, they always have this question. Even I had the same question when I was going to high school. So I'm doing all these linear algebra, some arithmetic. Uh, how I'm going to use all these things in my life, and how I can get some kind of uh, like insight about like what it is going to do in the real world application. So, for example, just if you take a simple like uh, a mathematical equation, like uh, like a, 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 a linear uh, velocities or linear acceleration. So, in a high school level, the students can get some understanding and some feeling about that particular thing, the acceleration, the velocity, and there is also like uh, other terms, the higher order uh, terms called the jerk, the snap. These are mathematical things and they are actively like working in all the drones that we use. When we try to uh, fly a drone, like uh, we need to accelerate the drone. So there is a gravity parameter, so the, gra uh, the thrust will be generated against the gravity. So all these things. So, But to understand all these physics, the science behind these things, the mathematics is the really, really very, uh, is that the only way that we can understand all these things. For example, if you want to take a drone from a point A to point B, then what are the things that we need? Then we can use the biomimicry inside that one. The students can observe how naturally things are like carried out. Like uh, they can see the flight of a bat, and they can also see the flight of a bird or uh, some other insect or some flying thing. And they can observe from that one. For example, a, a, bird, a bat uh, uses like a, it's a vision sensor, means its eyes, and the echolocation that is like an ultrasonic sensor. Then they can find that equivalent, that uh, the mechanical analogs of those things, the electronic analogs of those, those things. The eyes can be replicated with a camera. So instead of uh, kind of the bat eye, they can try to see how a camera can be used to do the same thing. And also for the echolocation, they can use the ultrasonic sensor. So when they fuse these two things, then that is the navigation part of a drone. So, so this is the high-level physics, but the understanding, the mathematics behind that one. So for in the, at the very beginning of these uh, college uh, students, college students will be introduced to these uh, elementary level of this control problem, like the Kalman filtering, and why do we need a filter, and uh, what a filter is doing, what is a mechanical filter, and what is an electronic filter, and what is a reference governor. So those things, if they build some kind of understanding about all these uh, uh, in the elementary school about the physics of this drone or any other mechanical system then with that insight, they can really do better in the college. So they can easily connect all these things in, in their uh, future educational career and in understanding all these things. So as far as the math is concerned, like uh, all about like uh, algebra. So for anyone who is not uh, happy learning linear algebra, you cannot have build a system like this. Like you cannot build the brain of the system. So it all starts with that really fundamental linear algebra and most importantly, the physics. So I would emphasize all the students to get some idea about all these physical things. So what's the mass? What is the weight? What's the difference between the mass and weight? So they need to know all these things. And what is the stress? And what is the torque? So drone is some easily available platform that anybody can just go buy in a market and can just get some feeling about all these things. So there is a mass. OK, there, then we need to generate a thrust to lift that mass. Okay, so just go to the textbook, the high school textbook, and see what is the equation that is relating the mass and the stress, and how this propeller is going to generate that one. Then there will be some little bit of aerodynamics coming in. And so as a high school student, they will be getting all opportunities. They will be learning biology. They will be learning physics, chemistry. 
pretty much everything is going inside the drone. So, for example, the, the flight of the drone can be mimicked from a bat or from a bird. And uh, on the other hand, like, uh, so there is a linear and angular momentum terms. Like, for example, you cannot stop the drone just like that. If you just apply the brake or something, it won't stop in the air. So it will just take something. So the students can think about that. Why it is not stopping like that? So Why it is moving forward? What I was thinking about is how we would construct or think through a one semester program that would touch on all these aspects without getting into a lot of depth, but show the application. But let's, let's take it. We take a one minute break in the middle of the show. Let's come back after that one break and talk about how we would think of a a one semester class that would bring in bits and pieces of all this to give people that instant insight. Can we? One minute later. Yep. There was an old woman who lived in a shoe. She had so many children, she didn't know what to do. She gave them some broth without any bread and kiss them all soundly and put them to bed. Hunger is a story we can end. End it at feedingamerica.org. Hi, I'm Dave Stevens, the uh, host of Cyber Underground uh, every Friday here at 1 p.m. on thinktechhawaii.com. And then every episode is uploaded to the Cyber Underground that library of shows that you can see of mine on youtube.com. And uh, I hope you'll join us here every Friday. We have some topical discussions about why security matters and what could scare the absolute bejesus out of you if you just try to watch my show all the way through. Hope to see you next time on the Cyber Underground. Stay safe. It is still noontime, folks, noontime hour here in, in Honolulu in uh, 6.15 time period over in Syracuse, New York, where Sasi is uh, standing by with us again from uh, Acrobotics. Uh, Sasi, Dr. Sasi Prabhagahan, did I get it pretty close? And uh, anyway, Sasi, uh, yeah, so you're okay with that, I like that. So we were talking before the break about uh, the incredible role that math has in something as small and as complex but as, as effective as, as a drone such as the ones you had behind you there. And you went through in your discussion uh, some of the aspects of math. Uh, again, we're not talking about just the pure calculational aspects but about the uh, inspirational, inspirational, I guess you might say. And, and actually, drones and STEM could be a fantastic inspiring factor for people to think more about the math of the future. But we've got to think about the math of the, the static item, structure uh, and such, the dynamic aspects, command and control, the, the operational aspects like safety and reliability and dependability, those can be modeled mathematically as well. We do that all in the aerospace domain today. This needs to be injected into our thinking process at the uh, elementary, at the high school, and in the, in the college level. So uh, as I was saying uh, during the break, that um, I remember uh, two years before you got through enough calculus to be able to handle aeronautical engineering in, in days gone by. And it seems like we have to work a lot faster today. So if we were to yeah. think of a one semester, the math of drones curriculum of some kind, and maybe, you know, a semester is what, uh, 18 weeks these days? That's like nine two-week mm -hmm. segments. Uh, what could we realistically do to illustrate the essence of these multiple branches of math in a quick sense without actually training them, but then the application <laughs> side without actually having the learning? We got MATLAB these days, for example. A lot can be done in, yeah. in, in SIM these days. So. We, we seem to have generated the tools to allow us to go much faster forward. What would you think of a one semester class, a UVSI sponsoring or something like that? that, <laughs> that uh, yeah, that is one thing like uh, even like, uh, yeah, schools need to have that such kind of curriculum because such drones, it's not a single major or something. It's a multidisciplinary approach. So one of the things going inside is like uh, there is a lot of mechanical engineering to make all the structural, designing the couplers and uh, the uh, air drag interaction. So there is a lot of aerodynamics and going with that one. And some chemistry guys can exploit those things. Like they can do 
the molecule structure, like uh, what is the uh, how the black coefficient is will be changed over the temperature and uh, in different medium, because there are newses and they want to fly drones in Venus or in Mars, so <laughs> they don't have the same atmospheric condition as we do. So these kind of there is a lot of chemistry that's a totally different atmosphere with different like air density, different molecules. So how these and so that is the chemistry major people can jump into this one. They can learn and they can probably contribute into that one. And there is a lot of electrical and electronics going in this one. A software development, a hardware development, firmware development. So there is a high level like a control algorithm. And that will be running on the very higher uh, outer loop. And that will be a low-level motor controller that will be taking all the control inputs and translating everything to the motor language. So there is a lot of firmware in that going. So a computer science student can jump into this one, and they need to know the fundamentals. Like, uh, So there are multiple like kind of disciplinary things. And the main important thing is like a controls group. So the controls, uh, students measuring the controls, they can do come up with a simple linear PAD controller. And when they graduate and join the PhD or the advanced degree, then they can just expand the same thing. So I did all these things in my undergrad, a PAD controller, but this is having this kind of problem. So and what I need to do now is come up, to come up with a nonlinear controller. So the nonlinear controller on manifold. So this is a totally evolving process. So if someone is really passionate about this drone, and if, if they start everything from the elementary school, then during their uh, college, the entry, the, uh, the first or uh, second year of the college, they will be able to combine all these things together. So a proper curriculum will be having a one-year program, will be having uh, a fundamentals about uh, the mathematics. Like it's nothing more than linear algebra. So how do you invert a matrix? How do you take uh, like a vector measurement? A uh, sensor will just give you vector measurement. If you want to measure that, uh, the altitude of the drone, are we going to do? It's just going to put a laser LiDAR sensor in the bottom, a single point source LiDAR sensor, and that will be giving everything as a float uh, kind of a bits and pieces. So how to kind of uh, acquire the data and how to process that one? Simple of mathematics, not advanced mathematics, not any mathematics on manifold. It's a simple like three level mathematics. But how to kind of acquire the data, how to process the data, then they can simply use a simple Butterworth filter. So there is some kind of control uh, kind of engineering going in. So the fundamental course should talk more about linear algebra. So linear algebra is very fundamental for all the kind of, for a simple like a toy drone, it's just linear algebra. You don't need to know anything other than that. It's just if you're good with linear algebra, then you can start to build your own like a toy drone. But if you want to make an autonomous, like a sophisticated drone, then on top of the linear algebra, you need to know some kind of uh, kind of uh, nonlinear dynamics and control approach. So you need to know what a Hamiltonian is, what a Lagrangian is. So that is for the higher level. But for a beginner course or a crash course, linear algebra with some programming skills, and it's not even super complicated. It's like the Arduino level, the Arduino 101 level programming, a simple how to put two vectors and how to subtract two vectors, how to implement a, a simple uh, Butterworth filter, you know. So these kind of things should cover the programming side. And when it comes to the controller side, it's very simple like a PID controller, a linear PID that is more than enough for a toy drone. So, so he'll be covering the linear algebra part, a simple programming, the introduction to programming level, and then some kind of um, uh, another important thing that I forgot to mention is like a, a mechanical understanding. It's, they don't need to do a course in this one, but they need to have some kind of understanding. So if I want to select a material, it's some kind of common sense, like whether it should be made of uh, uh, iron, steel, aluminum, or like a carbon fiber. So that makes them to think about what is the weight to strength ratio. So that is a kind of introduction to mechanical engineering, but all the components are already available in the market. So they no need to do anything. They can just find some carbon fiber, and they need to know how to, what are the manufacturing process involved in machining such things. And they need to know like what a lathe machine is, what a drilling machine is. And, uh, but most of the things are readily available. But if they want to do something on top of this one, a simple 3D printer can do most of the things for them. And again, the same skill set, whatever they have learned in this linear algebra and in the, uh, the basic physics, it will be helping them to kind of form the foundation for printing or getting some insight of how to develop a good 3D model uh, and all these kind of parameters. So the, a comprehensive course on this 101 of this drone 
will be, and this is not about the application side, this is about internally. If you, without knowing the internal components of the drone, you cannot like uh, kind of be a successful like a researcher in this aspect. And the future needs a lot more of these kind of people. It's not someone with mathematics skill. It's not someone with electronic skill. It's like a combination. So drone is a very good platform and a very good approach to attack this multidisciplinary aspect. If, if you want to build a drone, you have to be an electrical engineer, you have to be a mechanical engineer, you have to be a kind of an aerospace engineer, a computer scientist, a programmer, and also a pilot. So you, you, you you said, all these things. You've kind of covered the complete waterfront from uh, <clears throat> from mechanical systems, chemical systems, and, and all the way to nonlinear control systems, uh, and you've tied that into plain old linear algebra, all the way to some mathematics you haven't mentioned yet, such as calculus of variations and Markov chain modeling and some of these exotic aspects. So yeah. you've, you've tied the whole thing together in a very nice way, and I really appreciate that. If we could get that story to some folks who do academic curriculum development and think of a piece that fits at the high school level, a piece that fits at the undergraduate level, I think we would do a favor to the business because I think, as you said, this is multidisciplinary, multifunctional, and, and a, a strong capability in just one area isn't going to get you there, isn't going to advance the state of the art as, as fast as we need. But I was intrigued by your comment about the nonlinear. That's something that our, aspect, our, 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 uh, our industry doesn't understand very well, and I think a lot of people don't understand. I mean, aeronautics emerged by linearizing everything. And uh, it, 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 the whole idea of an airplane is, is it's totally linearized, and you have yeah. prevention devices to keep you from getting into the nonlinear response areas because you can't handle them. So you've broken through that code. And, and you, you've moved into the nonlinear domain, which is a major advance in that direction. So tell us a little yeah. bit in the two or three minutes we have left here, tell us a little bit about how do you explain that to our audience? Okay, so now we are <laughs> moving to the graduate level of the control problem yeah. that we are doing, especially in acrobotics. We are trying to bridge the gap, as Ted mentioned just now, like uh, the industry still works in the linear space, but that is actually happening. So the traditional system uses uh, EKF, extended Kalman filter for uh, sense of fusion, and it uses linear PID for uh, kind of attitude and motion control. And it's a simple, like a uh, kind of a uh, greater circle or a geodesic problem for all the guidance things. But that is not what exactly the can understand. To make to exploit the system to get the maximum out of it without uh, harming anybody to make it in the safe region. So what we are trying to do is like we are coming up with an engineer like a, a state estimation scheme. We call the variational force estimator that is based on the uh, discrete Lagrangian principle uh, that uses that uses the energy model and uh, that is converged to the real time. So and we are using a finite time stable controller. So whenever I mention all these nonlinear things, I always stress this stability. So what we are trying to do is making that nonlinear system stable and flexible. So it should be a system uh, so it should be stable, flexible, and robust. So if you can achieve these two things, these three things, then your system is considered to be safe and reliable. No linear mathematics can do these things. So you need to do your calculus on a manifold because all these systems, all the drones, everything is evolving on a non-linear state space, not a linear Cartesian phase. It's evolving on a non-linear state space. And uh, the way to represent the non-linear state space is by using this manifold approach. So we do all our calculus on a, a geometric group called the uh, Special Euclidean Group, SC3. There is a combination of uh, this rotation matrix and position vectors, and that is on a manifold. So that that's a lead group of rotation, actually, so, and position. Let me just inter intercept that for a minute, because we're gonna, I think we're going to be uh, out of time here in a minute. But the, the concept of manifold operations, manifold calculations, superb, because that allows the nonlinear to be managed. Then the other piece we won't be able to talk about here, but that's the issue of fault accommodation and how we're going to handle all that within our failures of some kind, sensor failures or, or equipment failures, and that would be Markov chain modeling and things like this that manage the propagation of, of, uh, of fall forward. So, uh, but at this point in time, uh, Saucy, I, I truly appreciate your, uh, your incredible expression of this future and how we have to get kids going in this direction of, of uh, nonlinear mathematics in order to push the state of the art uh, to where it has to be. So thank you very much for coming on. It's a very 
it was only half an hour, a very short show. It's uh, hard to get all the information in there. We'll have you on again, and we'll talk about the next steps of what you're doing at AK Robotics and uh, where this is going in math. And uh, again, folks, we'll uh, see you next time on uh, Where the Drone Leads. <laughs>